So uh, now it's Star Trek down. I want to do a little piece about horror, and I decided to put together a piece about my favorite horror author, H.P. Lovecraft. So a lot of you are familiar with H.P. Lovecraft. For those of you who are not, H.P. Lovecraft was an effeminate, xenophobic Anglophile yeah. who wrote disturbing stories about horrible monsters, dead gods, and the ultimate futility of human existence. So what I did is I wanted to take some of those ideas and make them more kind of approachable to children. <laughs> so I wrote kind of a Lovecraft for Kids story called The Thing That Should Not Be Seriously. Under Your Bed. <laughs> and here's a little picture of the thing that should not be under your bed. Uh, page one of The Thing That Should Not Be Under Your Bed. Page one. There is a monster under your bed, right now. It is going to kill you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Page two. It's a very strange looking monster. It has a big scaly head, a long slimy body covered in wings, tentacles, and thousands of beady little red eyes. The monster stands on two little heathen goat legs. And finally, the monster has a big slobbering mouth, right where its vagina should be. A vagina with teeth is called a vagina dentata. I heard woo and ew. Fair enough. The term vagina dentata is something you will only learn if you go to college and get a useless liberal arts degree. And even if you do learn it, where are you going to use it? Job interviews? Cocktail parties? Casual conversations on the Lido deck? No, the only place to use a term like vagina dentata is in tasteless comedy shows. And it's usually too gross to get a laugh anyway. But you don't have to worry about that. You're not going to college because you are going to die. Tonight. Page three. Let's review some of the people in your neighborhood who can't help you. First, there's Mr. Policeman. If he doesn't immediately lose his mind just by looking at the monster, he might manage to fire off a couple of rounds from his tiny little gun. <laughs> this is like casting a vote for a third party candidate. <laughs> it is a nice gesture. But it's not really going to do anyone any good. Then there's Mr. Priest. He's totally useless. Now, Mr. Librarian, He's your best chance. He has access to thousands and thousands of books filled with ideas and stories. Books are like chocolate you can eat with your mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, some books aren't very good for you. For example, there's a book called Ancient Sociocultural Iconography in Demonological Incantations for Dummies. <laughs> also known as the Necronomicon. For some reason, Mr. Librarian is willing to check that book out to any Yahoo with a library card and a photo ID. Which brings us back to your daddy. Page four. Your daddy is actually the reason the monster is under your bed in the first place. You see, your daddy is a cultist. Your daddy used to think that people who dress up in weird robes, perform ancient rituals, and worship dead gods were bad people. Then he realized that was a pretty accurate description of most religions. <laughs> so what the hell, he reasoned. And before he knew it, he was out in the woods, buck naked, chanting in the obscene tongues of long forgotten languages and sacrificing innocent little bunny rabbits, one after another. It was like Easter. <laughs> An endless bloody Easter of death. Page five, the end. I know. It seems sudden, but really, what more is left to be said? There's a monster under your bed, and it's going to kill you. 
We've known all the important information since page one, haven't we? And yet, you would like a moral to give a sense of conclusion to the story, wouldn't you? After all, that's why we tell stories, isn't it? We flail and grasp at all the events and ideas of our lives and try to look, wrestle them down into something tidy and reasonable with a beginning, middle, and end. When in reality, we have no control over most parts of our lives. Certainly not the beginning, sometimes the end, but mostly we just get to fumble about with the middle. Fumble, 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 go the humans. And if, in our fumbling, we happen to discover that the narrative structure is an artificial creation, nothing more than a fancy paint job designed to cover up the poor workmanship in the universe's construction, so what? It's nice to share stories with friends. Stories that make us laugh and cry and think about different ways we might fumble around with the middle of our lives. Stories are fun. Unfortunately, yours is over. <laughs> because there exists in this world a thing that by all human standards of decency should not be. And it's under your bed right now. So to all you other children out there who get to go on living, good night. Sleep tight, and don't let the vagina dentata bite. Thank you.